stand with the choir as we are going to have our gospel lesson this morning for Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 46th verse. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus was there with his disciples, together with the large crowd, when they were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then he rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please be seated. And let us pray. Jesus, may we have the faith to follow you along the road of life. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, where do you stand? I read this past week about a man who was at an airport. Thought it was a very important man. He was on standby, and he kept going up to the counter and saying to the person working behind the counter there at the airline, can you move my name forward on the standby list to the top? And they kept telling him no, and he would come back time and time again, until finally he got upset. And he walked up there to the counter, and he said to the woman standing behind the counter, he said, do you know who I am? Well, she'd had enough. She got on the microphone and said, we have a man here who doesn't know who he is. If somebody would claim him, show him the waiting area, we'll call on him when it's his turn. Where do you stand? Are you standing on the promises of Christ? For I believe that's part of what we experience in our scripture this morning. Here they came to Jericho, which is a religious city on the way to Jerusalem. Jesus and his disciples were together, and leaving the city, there was a blind man named Bartimaeus. Bar means son, Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, like the son of God, Bar Joseph. So here they were coming out, and you notice where that man stood in society. He was a blind man. And to them, he was blind either because of his sin, or if he was born blind because of the sin of his parents. And so here he was begging. That was where he stood in the society. And he heard that Jesus was coming, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. In other words, he took a stand for his rights. He knew what he needed and wanted. Well, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy upon me. And so Jesus stopped and called him. And they called to the blind man and said, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. And Jesus asked a simple question. What do you want? Get to the point. Name it and claim it. Tell me what you want. And you know what? He gave him a simple answer. He said, I want to see. It was that simple. And Jesus didn't say, well, I'm going to lay hands on you. We're going to have a prayer. I'm going to put salve on your eyes. He said, no. He said, go. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the way. See, it was by faith that this happened. It's by faith. Now, today is Reformation Sunday. Well, we celebrate the Reformation of the church and Martin Luther. Remember, he was an obscure monk who was struggling in the faith. Martin Luther was having a hard time as a monk. He would do his works and more works and more works trying to work his way into salvation. 
He would go to confession sometimes six hours a day and still come out of confession thinking he needed to confess more. Until finally one day, Martin Luther found some scripture in the Bible where B Jesus said things like in Matthew 8, 13, May it be done to you according to your faith. And something happened to Martin Luther. And it was the beginning of the Protestant Reformation of which we are a result. He had despair and it was replaced with faith. And notice what he tried to do. He did not try to form a Lutheran church. That was not Luther's intention. He tried to reform the Catholic church from within. But he was not successful. Any more than John Wesley did not try to form the Methodist church. He was trying to reform the Church of England, but out of that came the United Methodist Church. Each time there's been a reformation or revolution, many times the intention is not to change, but to change from within. But here we have our scripture this morning, and we find here the Reformation Sunday reference to justifying by faith. But the result for Martin Luther on October the 31st, 1517, was that he went on trial for what he was saying about being justified by faith, that you don't have to have good works. You don't have to go to confession. You can go directly to God in prayer. Who ever heard of such a thing? But that's what he said. And so on that day, which we will celebrate this Thursday, some know it as Halloween, we call it All Saints' Eve because that's what it was, All Saints' Eve, when Martin Luther went to the church in Wittenberg, Germany, tacked his 95 theses on the door, and you'll see 95 theses, not tacked, but taped on the front door of the church as you come or go. These were the 95 things he had that he wanted to say to the church that he didn't believe in. He didn't believe in an infallible pope. He believed that Scripture came before man. He believed that priests should be able to wed. He believed that laity should be able to handle the cup of communion. See, there's a lot that he believed that was contrary to what the church was teaching at that time. Now, we're going to get to some good times in a minute, but first let's see what Martin Luther had to say. Because of Scripture, H. Richard Niebuhr said it wasn't that he discovered something new, but something that had always been there in the Scripture, justification by faith. And so the problems he had wasn't with the Bible, but basically with the church. And so out of that came this Protestant Reformation when he was on trial and he came to the conclusion after all he had to say and they asked him to recant of what he said and what he wrote. He said, here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. God help me. Amen. He took his stand. Are you taking your stand? Standing on the promises of Christ. It's important for us to take our stand now, that wasn't the only time that he went up before a court. Again, it was that he would go another time and have an experience on April the, of 1521, when once again he went before, this time it was the Emperor Charles V, and they found him guilty, and they excommunicated him from the church. And his life was even in danger. And again, in March of 1529, he was branded an outlaw, and that's when they started calling them a Protestant for protesting. But it was a positive protest. It was a witness, not a negative gang-like protest, but a positive witness to what it meant to be a Christian, as much as we might experience today when we stand up for what we believe. Well, today I think it's very important to realize that the Roman Catholic Church and the United Methodist Church have a lot in common. We're together in this. For example, this morning, I'm preaching for Mark 10. 
It's the common lectionary scripture that Catholic priests are preaching this morning all over the world. We have this in common. And in a Catholic church, you will find them singing Martin Luther's A Mighty Fortress is Our God in English in the Mass. It's wonderful how we've come together in unity and be together as Christians. Matter of fact, Mother Teresa, she once said that she believed that she was justified by faith, and because of that, she wanted to do good works there in Calcutta, India. You see, we bring it all together now, that we're all Christians together, because we take a stand for Christ, and in that stand, people will know who we are and what we believe. I hope this morning that you will be able to say with Martin Luther and then later on with John Wesley, this is his journal, and it's a little tattered, but I want to read a portion of it to you this morning that came from his experience of how Martin Luther affected not only John Wesley, but us being here today. This is on uh, May the 14th, 1738. John Wesley wrote in his journal, in the evening I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street where one was reading Luther's preface to the epistle to the Romans. About a quarter to nine while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ and Christ alone for my salvation and was given an assurance he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. John Wesley, the founder of our church, got it from Martin Luther. That's when his heart was strangely warmed. How about yours? Can you say, here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. God help me. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we are thankful that like Martin Luther, we can say, here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. God help me. Amen. Well, our hymn of invitation is Standing on the Promises. There are those of you who want to make this your church home. We're going to invite you to come.